if we can briefly look out into the next hundred years on this. I apologize for the existential questions, but it seems obvious to me that as gain of function type of research and development becomes easier and cheaper, it, it will become greater and greater risk. So if it doesn't no longer need to be contained uh, within the laboratories of high security, it feels like this is one of the greatest threats facing human civilization. Do you worry that at some point in the future, a leaked man-made virus may destroy most of human civilization? I do worry about the risks. And at the moment where we have the greatest control, the greatest oversight uh, is when this is federally funded research. But as you're alluding, there's no reason to imagine that's the only place uh, that this kind of activity would go on. If there was an evil source that wished to create a virus that was highly pathogenic in their garage, the technology does get easier. And there is no international oversight about this either that you could say has the same stringency as what we have in the United States. So yes, that is a concern. It would take uh, a seriously deranged uh, group or person to undertake this on purpose, uh, given the likelihood that they too uh, would go down. We don't imagine there are going to be bioweapons that only kill your enemies and don't kill you. Sorry, we're too much alike for that to work. So I don't see it as an imminent risk. There's lots of uh, scary novels and movies written about it, but I do think it's something we have to consider what are all the things that ought to be watched. You may not know that if somebody is ordering a particular oligonucleotide uh, from one of the main suppliers, and it happens to match smallpox, they're going to get caught. So there is effort underway to try to track any nefarious actions that might be going on. In the United States or internationally, is there an international collaboration of try to track this stuff? There is some. I wish it were stronger. This is a general issue, Lex, in terms of do we have a mechanism, particularly when it comes to ethical issues, to be able to decide what's allowable and what's not and enforce it? I mean, look where we are with germline uh, genome editing for humans, for instance. There's no enforcement mechanism. There's just bully pulpits and governments that get to decide for themselves. So you talked about evil. What about incompetence? Does that worry you? I was born in the Soviet Union. Um, my dad, a physicist, worked at Chernobyl. That comes to mind. That wasn't evil. That was, I don't know what word you want to put it. Maybe incompetence is too harsh. Maybe it's the inherent incompetence of bureaucracy. I don't know. But for whatever reason, there was an accident. Does that worry you? Of course it does. And we know that SARS, for instance, uh, did manage to leak out of a lab in China two or three times. Uh, and at least in some instances, people died. Fortunately, quickly contained. All one can do in that circumstance, because you need to study the virus and understand it in order to keep it from causing a broader pandemic, but you need to insist upon the kind of biosecurity, the BSL-2, 3, and 4 framework uh, under which those experiments have to be done. And certainly at NIH, we're extremely rigorous about that, but you can't count on every human being <laughs> to always do exactly what they're supposed to. So there's a risk there, which is another reason why if we're contemplating supporting research on pathogens that might be the next pandemic, you have to factor that in, not just whether people are going to do something un that we couldn't have predicted, where all of a sudden they created a virus that's much worse without knowing they were going to do that, but also just having an accident. That's, that's in the mix when those uh, estimates are done about whether the risk is worth it or not. 